Hello there guys, my name's Matt and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install one of these up-down LED wall lights. So it has an LED strip in the bottom and the top. It's rated at 8 watts, so it's very low energy consumption. And it's very quick and easy to install, so I'm going to be showing you how that's done. It has a nice warm light that comes from the bottom and the top. I'll just show you this now. And when it's dark in the room, it gives off a nice atmosphere because it's nice warm lighting and uh, very low energy consumption. So. I'm going to be showing you that now. So basically I've installed one already into this bedroom on this wall, but I've got another one here and I thought it'd be better to show you this one because I've got a nice slim line light here. So even though the door opens onto it, you can still open it pretty much all the way. So if you've got a place where you, you're lacking space, these wall lights might be the right thing for you. This one is more typical because it's got plasterboard, so you need wall plugs. Um, you'll need the light itself and a few connector blocks, but I'll show you how it's installed now and hopefully you'll enjoy the video. So first of all, I'm just gonna put a disclaimer out there that I'm not a qualified electrician. So if you are not confident with electrics yourself, then please do consult a qualified electrician to do so. But if you are confident with electrics and you feel that you can do it confidently and well and safely, then you can use this video as a reference, but not as instructional purposes because I might miss some information out. So first of all, you've got to find your consumer unit. I've got mine up here and I'm going to be turning off the bedroom lights because I'm working on the bedroom. I'm going to turn off all of those switches, all the kitchen sockets and the RCD that controls all of these circuit breakers. I've got another set over here, but I'm using the rest of the room, so I'm going to leave these on. But if you really want to be safe, you can turn off the whole of the electrics for the house, turn off the light switches as well, make sure it's the light switch is actually off. And then you'll have several positions of safety because the contacts will not be touching. So that's the first thing to do. So these are all the tools you're going to need for the project. We've got a pen, a spirit level to make sure everything's level. We've got some wall plugs, a drill bit for the wall plugs, the screws to go into the wall plugs. We've got some earth sheathing, a screwdriver, the light itself, some con connector blocks to connect the wires, an automatic cable stripper, which you're definitely going to want. It's much faster and easier to use than normal cable stripper. A screwdriver with a Phillips head and a flat head and a hammer to make sure the wall plugs are in. But I'm going to show you each tool as we go through and how to do everything as we go along. But if you want a list of all these tools, then please do look at the link in the description because I've got everything listed out for you. So first of all, take your light and there is a little screw here with an earth cable attached to it. We're going to take that off and then basically get this metal thing out and that's what we're going to be attaching to the wall. So that's the first thing. And then get your spirit level and basically we want the screws to be on the underside of the light. So we're basically going to offer this up to the, the position where the cable is coming out and then put a spirit level across here. Make sure it's level. The bubble is now level approximately. So I'm going to hold that in position, mark out the positions of the holes here. There's one there and there's one there. And you can see in the positions of these holes, that allows you to move the, the, the bracket left and right. And this allows you to move it up and down. So it doesn't need to be exact. Once we've screwed it in, we can move it around. Okay, so now get your cable strippers. Um, and I know that these cables are off so I can touch them, everything's fine. Uh, but what I'm going to do is, I know that I can push that into the wall back to there. And you basically want to have about two inches worth of cable sticking out of the wall. So I'm going to cut all of these at the same time. So we've got two inches sticking out and then I'm going to strip the brown to about a centimetre. You can see that strip there. And then strip that there. That's stripped. And you can see how easy this is with an automatic cable stripper. The good thing about these is that once you strip it, you know that you've not damaged the cross-sectional area of the copper, because that's the main, the main issue with electrics, is if you damage the copper and you have thin sections, then you're gonna have a very heated parts of wire, which can cause a fire. So always use an automatic cable stripper. Like I said, link in the description for this. It's a very cheap item and it's much easier to do the normal cable stripping. And now I've stripped the cables and I'm actually gonna drill the holes now going right in the center of that little oval shape that's been 
made. I've got an eight mil drill bit for the eight mil wall plugs. And obviously it's just a plasterboard wall, so there's nothing behind it. And once I've done that, we've got these wall plugs and some screws. You just wanna choose a screw that matches the wall plug um, well, so that it expands and you want it to expand as close to the front as possible because we've only got a plasterboard wall. The plasterboard is gonna be here, so you want it to expand there. So this wall plug does, and you wanna match the screw with the length of the wall plug. This screw will actually burst out the end, so it doesn't matter, um, but I've, I've got a link in the description for the actual sizes that you can use. Um, but basically just push it through the wall and then get your hammer and don't hit too hard because you don't wanna damage the plasterboard too much, but that's nice and flush with the wall there. You want it as close as possible to the wall. And then, if you get that bracket that you had, you can now screw the bracket in using the wall plugs that we've just installed. So basically, put the bracket there, start your screw off in the wall. And just slow down as you get to the end. Let it grip very slightly in the center of that oval shape that you've got there. And put this one in here. And then get the spirit level down a little bit more, up a bit, and that is now level. So now that's level, we can now start attaching the light to these um, cables with the connector blocks. So I've now got this strip of connector blocks here, and you can cut them off by sticking them into the cable stripper um, and put it in the cutting section. Just literally cut it like that. And then cut three of them, I've already got three here. And then get a flat head screwdriver that will fit into the holes that you've got here. Loosen both of these screws. So now we've got one like that, you can see through. I'm gonna do it to all three of them. And then we're ready to start connecting the wires up. So then you wanna take the light, and we've got these two cables, we've got live and neutral. And we basically want to strip this white cable first, take that off just to give us a bit extra space, strip the white cable back a little bit further. Then because these are a little bit thin, what we're going to do is strip approximately two centimeters worth of wire and fold it back on itself. Again, we're going to do that on this side and basically twist the wire and then fold it over on itself to make it half the length, twist it. That's gonna give us more surface area to grip to in the connector block itself. That was done, do the same with this one. We've also got a earth wire that came off the light itself that was attached to the bracket. So we're gonna strip this to two centimeters as well. You can see it being stripped there, we'll take that off. Fold it back. And that's all three of the wires prepared. We already prepared these ones because I've got a centimeter left over here on all of them. And we've got a centimeter left over here on this one as well. So we've got two cables sticking out here. You don't always have two cables, but one is from the switch and it comes out of here and the other one goes in again and then comes out at that light over there. So there's one cable sticking out over, the, over there, but we've got two sticking out here. So what we need to do is connect up all of the lives together. And first of all, we're gonna start off with this live here. So using the connector block, we'll connect all these lives up, pushing them into the hole. A little bit fiddly, but I just want to show you how it's done because then it's much easier for you to see. There we go. That's pushed in. And you basically want to cover all of the copper with a connector block so that none is visible. You can see that none is visible from the bottom and there's none visible at the top. And then we'll take the screwdriver and we'll tighten this up. It's 
a flat head screwdriver because it's got a flat head screw in there. That one's tight. And we're using a five amp connector block because the light is eight watts, so it's extremely low voltage. Could have used a 13 amp connector block, but um, it ends up being too big. The hole ends up being too big and it's very difficult to actually grip on the wires. So that's why we're using this one. Um, so we can still fit those two cables in there. If you have more cables, you might want to choose a larger connector block like a 13 amp or um, something bigger, but this is five amp and it's big enough to connect all those wires together. So we've got them. And then we're going to do the uh, the neutral and then we're going to do the earth wire. So I'll go ahead and do those now. So we've got the brown one connected here and we're letting the light hang from the brown wire because it's not too heavy. Uh, and what we're going to do now is just thread the, we'll put the blue ones together into a bunch, thread that on the top there. Make sure none of the copper is, is visible from the bottom. Tighten up the connector. Also make sure there's none sticking out the top there. So what I'm gonna do is just tighten the connector up. And then tighten this one. And that's all done. So now we're going to take this earth sheathing and cover up the earth wire on both of the cables. So pushing this all the way to the end of the, the base of the cable there. And then folding it over where the end of the copper is. And then we're just going to reach in for a centimetre in so that we know we're going to have a centimetre of, of uh, copper exposed. So I've cut that there. We're going to do the same for the other one. We'll just drop that on the floor. Push that all the way into the base of the, co the cable. That's where the end of it is. So we're going to reach in for a centimetre. So we've now got two lengths. That was that one. You can see we've got a centimetre exposed there which is good for the connector block. Put this one in here, another centimeter exposed. And for this earth cable that connects to the actual light, we're gonna be sticking the connector block in this way and then sticking the earth cable in that way so that we can reach around and connect it to the light. You'll see what I'm saying in a second. And we'll stick them through that side and put the other earth wire through the other side and just meet them together in the middle. You don't want to tighten out so much that it, it causes the copper, the copper to be crushed and reduce the cross-sectional area of it. But you just want to make sure that that earth wire isn't going anywhere. So just put a tug on it a little bit and you'll, you'll know that it's not moving. So now you just want to make sure that all of the wires are facing to the right-hand side because we've got the electronics coming in from the left-hand side and we're going to be connecting, pushing these over and connecting the earth wire onto the right-hand side over here. So basically just fold them over like that, push them up against the wall and then we'll get this screw that's going to go into the bottom here and screw into the bottom of the bracket and we're going to put the screw through the bottom of the light, put this Fold this earth cable around the underside, fold it over like that, and join it, if you can see here, while it's folded, to the other side of the screw. So you can see there, it's folded over, and then we're just going to locate it into that hole in the wall. And there we go, it's now into the hole. And it's pretty easy to put it in position. I know it doesn't look easy, but it is actually quite easy because there's a lot of play in this, so it fits quite easily in position. And we've started screwing that in, but before we finish tightening it, you can take the other screw and then screw it into the other side where there is a, you can see here, I'll show you. You zoom in, you can see we've screwed in this side here and we've screwed, we're now screwing into this side here. So over here, we've got the earth cable that is connected to the, the metal on the underside of the bracket. And we've got this one here, which we're now finally screwing in. So just tighten up so it's 
sort of finger tight. You don't need to do it too much because it doesn't. It's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to fall off the wall. And then tighten this one up. That is now finger tight. And we'll just check that it's level. So we'll put the level, spirit level, on top again. You can see it's slightly over to the. We need to lift up this right hand side a little bit. And if you push on the bracket, as you as you saw before, remember there were those two holes. We can still move them. So if you push on the bracket itself and just slightly shuffle it up, you can level the light fairly easily and get it nice and level. So that's level now. Now's the moment of truth. I'm gonna turn on the electrics and then check the light out. So we we'll go back over to the consumer unit and I'm turning on the RCD. I'm turning on those switches again and we'll go back over to the light and there we go, we have both of them on the wall. That one over there and that one over there. And you can see the nice slimline light so it can fit into awkward spaces. I can open that wardrobe fully. It doesn't get hot because it's, it's not a high wattage lamp. And uh, so you could leave that there all day. It's a very nice and easy paintable surface. So if you did damage it at all, you can repaint it any color you want. Um, yeah, and it's very, very low uh, use energy lights. If you found this video helpful and you do decide to go ahead with the project, then maybe leave a link to the video that you did or send me a picture. I'll be really interested to see it. Um, but if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. I've got loads more DIY videos on how to fit radiators, how to do plumbing and electrics and how to do pretty much anything around the house. So if you like it, please do subscribe and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers.